If I die today, I'ma go and get some money. If I die today, I'ma go and get some money. If I die uh, today, if I die yeah. today. Cold flows for a cold mind, see a new world, but I'm so blind. Kick rocks when your time's up, better start digging like a cold mind. Cold heart, seen cold times, it's a bold move, but the sunshine raises up when you. Good morning, Cardano family. It's your boy Boomin coming at you with yet another video, guys. Go ahead and hit that subscribe button, that like button, and that notification bell so you never miss a Boomin video. Got these videos every single day. You don't want to miss them. I got my hot tea and honey locked and loaded, ready to go. Let's get this show started, guys. And today we're talking about Cardano. Of course, we are. Talk about Cardano every day. Follow me on Twitter as well. Let's get into the news. So. Talking about the uh, Vassal hard fork, everybody's wondering when this is going to occur. Now, I'm excited for the hard fork, guys, but uh, I will say that I don't think it's going to do too much for the price. Um, you know, uh, if you're hoping that Cardano could get to a dollar after the Vassal hard fork, I don't think that's going to happen. Um, but we can use this as a time to load up on Cardano and get ourselves prepared for the next bull rally, whenever that may be. Um, so that's what we're doing. According to the report, most providers managing the Cardano network have shifted and begun using Cardano's new upgrades. The providers have shifted to the recently released Cardano Node 1.35.3 version. This upgrade also features the introduction of EMV sidechains. The upgrade has translated into 45.8% of all stakes on the upgraded nodes. The stake is approximate to be over one point. 11.179 billion ADA, a remarkable amount considering the total value of the Cardano network. So we're almost there, guys. Uh, we need 75% of all Cardano stake pool operators to upgrade to this uh, version of the node, and we will be on the Vassal hard fork. So some of the benefits of the Vassal hard fork are scalability improvements, interoperability improvements and speed improvements these results will result in a change of fortunes that will push crypto up again eh, i don't know about that the hard fork is set to drive positive changes by acting as a catalyst to create a bear cycle that may push cryptos to new heights this cycle may provide investors with an incredible opportunity especially important given the recent crypto crash earlier in the year Vassal Hard Fork is set to achieve these outcomes by eliminating significant obstacles that may impede developers. So developer ease of use is going up, speed, interoperability, all those things. So uh, like I said earlier, guys, I don't think it's going to do too much for the price, but we still want to see Cardano grow, build, continue to work, even when the prices are down. Because guess what, guys? I can guarantee you one thing. There's going to be another crypto bull run. I don't know when, <laughs> but it's going to happen. And guess what, guys? I can guarantee you another thing. Crypto is going to crash again at some point in the future. It's going to crash again. There will be another 90% crash in crypto again in the future at some point. What are you going to do when that occurs? You're going to run, tuck tail for the hills sell everything and go to stocks or bonds i don't know moving on thank you to one cob ticker symbol one c-o-m-m this is uh you know i don't need to explain anything but i will anyway thank you to one cob for sponsoring the channel guys support your favorite small stake pool operator out there it's important crypto prices are going to go down lower so more and more uh, stake pool operators are going to be shutting down their machines. So please support your favorite small, small stake pool operator. Follow OneCom on Twitter for Cardano crypto news and notes. 0% fees until at least the end of December 2022. For all existing and new delegators. Thank you to OneCom. Let's go ahead and move on here. It looks like metadata. Metadata is coming to Ada Handle. This is pretty awesome, guys. Custom Cardano addresses for everybody. Shout out to Ada Handle. Um, pretty much, it's a uh, human readable address on the Cardano blockchain. You know, due to the way crypto is, those addresses are kind of like the policy ID here that you see here. 
you know, people aren't going to want to copy and paste, you know, a 24 letter address every time they're trying to send crypto. Ada Handle is a way to, again, provide human readable addresses so that it's easier to navigate and more uh, uh, user friendly in that perspective, amongst many, many other things. Um, so let's take a look, quick look at this video, guys. Uh, personalization is coming. Uh, metadata is coming to Ada Handle. Shout out to them, and let's let's watch. That's pretty cool. Shout out to Ada Handle. Um, and again, metadata, you can edit the data on your Ada Handle amongst other things. So um, that's definitely exciting. Let's go ahead and move on. We have Cardano here. Thank you to Dr. Shweta. <laughs> um, he posted here, Cardano is the highest ranking crypto brand in the latest brand intimacy 2022 report. The centralized blockchain has emerged as the top cryptocurrency brand with a quotient score of 52.6. So this is pretty cool guys. We see we, we have uh, Bitcoin here at number 30, Cardano at 26, HP at 23, Amazon at 18. Let's actually see what's number one here. I, I wanna see what number one is. Definitely interesting. Disney, Tesla, ah, yes. Makes sense. Trader Joe's number five, wow. Hmm. So here's the list, guys. We see Cardano right here. We see Bitcoin at 30. Rockstar Games at 37, nice. <clears throat> Yeah, so that's pretty cool, guys. Let's go ahead and move on. Finally, got a short update from the mid-month update here. We're probably going to be watching about five minutes of this uh, update. Technical update with Ken Hammond and Nigel Hamsley on the latest progress towards the Vassal upgrade. After this, guys, I think I'm good to be uh, signing off. I love you guys so much. Don't let your means be dreams. I will talk to you guys soon with the V-Chain and Cardano updates. Have an amazing day. We're going to make it. Um, very well, Tim. So we've been busy again for the last couple of weeks. It's just non-stop as usual, but it's coming together. So we've now released a new node, that's 135.3, and we've kicked off all the downstream component integration. We've also released a new pre-production environment. This has come from the different discussions we've had with the community over the last couple of months. We realized that there is a need for a pre-production environment that is a copy of mainnet. And then we'll continue to develop out our test nets and possibly build more. There is still the Vasil DevNet, which the DAP developers can continue to use. The serialization library is now updated. The majority of, of DAPs do need that. Secondly, we've got the wallet backend, which is critical for the exchanges and a number of other DAPs that are out there. The token registry is being updated. I'm expected to get it updated in the next day or so from the Cardano Foundation. Rosetta has been updated. Once again, this is our key interface for the exchanges so they can kick off their integration. Ogmios has been updated, which is used by a number of dApps, including some of our own downstream products. We have Blockfrost as well that has been respun on the DevNet and then will be updated for the pre-production environment. We have the GraphQL and then the final one is Explorer, which is going to be updated over the next day or so. So with all those downstream components updated, we're on track to be able to get through this next hard fork. The critical factor is, is as we speak right now, there are no category one to three defects or bugs outstanding right now. And this is a critical factor for us to decide if we're ready to go through the hard fork. So as we go through this, we've got the next few weeks worth of uh, integration. 
and fingers crossed we won't find any other severity one to three bugs during this period and we'll be in a position to hard fall. Let's dive a little bit into that, Nigel. I mean, obviously, we've previously set two indicative dates and we've had to move those dates two times. Um, but that's ultimately because of the issues we've encountered, which we've had to address. Can you tell us a little bit more about some of that work that we've had to do? Sure, Tim. And it is. We can give an estimate on when we can get things finished or get things delivered. But ultimately, it is software engineering. We have categories of issues from severity one to severity five. We've decided that because we want a very high quality network, we're not prepared to push out a release if it's got any severity one, two or three defects inside it. So we've encountered a number of these over the last few weeks, and that's the reason why we've had to update the nodes and then go through and kick off the testing that goes with it. So every time that we release a node, we have to run our QA testing again. We have to run our integration testing to the components and we also have to run our own benchmarking to make sure that we've got everything lined up for this major release. As we've been through this process we have encountered a number of issues that we decided were of sufficient severity for us to want to fix them Tim. A couple of things that are worth mentioning we had a wrong parent block problem that was highlighted from our SBOs in mainnet this was a low severity incident but we had to fix it and that fix is now in 135.3 in addition to that, we've done some things that are going to be really helpful for us. So one is, is to make sure that in the node, we can now understand what node version every person is running. And that's really helpful for us as we go forwards. In addition to that, we can report that there's going to be a number of user experience improvements for the CLI, which is critical to our DAP development community. So thank you, Nigel, for that. Kevin, let's bring you in now as well. A lot of work been going on the node, as, as Nigel has said. Perhaps you can tell us a bit more about that and what particularly the SPOs are working on right now. Yeah, so obviously this has been a huge team effort. Uh, dozens of people at IOG have been working on the VASA node for many months, and we're all very pumped to get this across the line with the upcoming Basil hard fork. Everything's looking very good. Uh, we very much appreciated working with the community, working with stake pool operators to identify, test and eliminate all the little issues that we've been dealing with and that Nigel has mentioned. So 135.3, we're pleased to say addresses all of the significant issues that have been raised with us. Nigel has mentioned severity one to three issues. These, these are things that we consider to be critical or serious. There are none of these in the node. Guys, thank you so much for enjoying another booming video. I want to give a special shout out to our wonderful Patreon subscribers, Maryland for Crypto, American Home Remedies.com, Fruz Den, Kyle Bachi, Crypto SVT.SI, Angeltopia, DNC Vale, Leon Jackson the second, Kragan, All LLC, and Lucky Sunshine Token. Thank you again, guys, for your wonderful support. I really, really appreciate it, and I do these for you. Keep chopping wood, guys. We are all going to make it. Have an amazing day.